Do you have any fear of death? No. I wonder about it from time to time, but I can't say that I'm afraid of it. Like shrinking from death itself is not something normal for a Christian. And so if life is a gift, but also life is suffering and life is learning very difficult lessons and life is, you know, watching people you love die and having to make decisions now that will positively impact us in the future and having to have all of this knowledge that that allows us to do that. Um, do, do you think that life is fundamentally a gift or that life is fundamentally or life is fundamentally good or life is fundamentally suffering and lessons? I would say creation is fundamentally good. Creation is fundamentally a gift and is good. We, um, we broke it in the fall. Right? So the, we, we had this marvelous gift given to us. And then by our rebellion, we um, shattered it. We, we broke it. The, gift, the underlying gift remains good and remains gracious and remains something that we should be grateful for. But we now have to budget for sin. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and the effects of sin. And as I would talk to other believers, everything, everything negative in my life is traceable to sin. There's, right. There's, there's nothing, uh, all the, all the good, all the good stuff is unmerited. I didn't earn any of it. And all the stuff, uh, you know, you look ahead and say, Oh, look, the consequences of my actions. <laughs> Oh, look. That old chestnut, eh? Hey? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, and when you think about death, la last question about death, I promise, before I just depress everyone away from this podcast. Um, do you have any fear of death? Because the one thing that I always find so fascinating about Christians who are really so, so much further along than I am is when they transcend the fear of death because I just don't, I can't imagine not having that fear. Yeah, I've, I, I have to say I've got, questions about death or I wonder, uh, you know, I wonder about it from time to time, but I can't, I can't say that I'm afraid of it. No. Um, mm. You know, it's uh, my, uh, uh, a little over a year ago, uh, well, uh, my dad went to be with the Lord um, maybe a year and a half ago. And my wife and I moved in with him for the last four years of his life. He was a very gifted evangelist and very uh, fruitful and productive throughout his life. And I, I asked him maybe a year or two before he died, uh, dad, are you ready to, ready to die? And he said, no. And I said, what, mm. what? And he said, I've got, there's too much work to do. <laughs> I've got, <Yeah. laughs> I've got, I've got, the, yeah. I've got these things I've got to wrap up, but in terms and how old was he? Was that, he was 94 <laughs> when he died. He was 94 when he died. Yeah. Gosh. But he was good innings. He was sitting in a, uh, recliner chair, uh, chair bound at home and had a secretary coming in, uh, processing letters and doing work for him. He, he worked up to the, up to the end, very fruitful, yeah. very fruitful man. And, um, but the, the, um, like shrinking from death itself is, mm. is not something I think that is, is not normal for a, a Christian. And that, that doesn't yep. mean if you do shrink from death that you're not a Christian, but it means that there's that's an area to grow in. Right, right. Okay. Um, last question I wanted to ask you, because I don't want to hold you for any longer than an hour, uh, is in terms of your eschatological beliefs, post-millennialism, is that? Yeah, that's that, correct. What the, yep, yep. Um, what exactly does that mean? And where does that put us in terms of uh, the eschatological timeline, if you will? All right, so there are three main eschatological positions. They're premillennial, amillennial, and postmillennial. And those three positions, the preposition tells you basically tells you what they believe about the placement of the second coming of Christ. Mm -hmm. So uh, the millennium, the joke is, the millennium is uh, mentioned one time in Revelation twenty. Uh, it's a thousand years of peace that Christians like to fight about. So, um, premillennialists believe that there's a literal, literal earthly millennium, and Christ comes again at the beginning of the millennium. Uh, they're, they're saying it, we believe in a premillennial return of Christ. Okay. Yep. The amillennialist 
um, says that it's a term of negation. We don't believe that there's any earthly millennium. At some point in the future, Christ is going to come again, but without reference to the millennium. That's all millennial. Okay. And then I'm a post-millennialist, meaning that I believe that the return of Christ is after the millennium, at the conclusion of the millennium. So that means right. um, basically premillennialists tend to be doom and gloomers about future world history. Things are going to go from bad to worse, and then the Antichrist is going to take over, and then Christ is going to return and usher in his thousand years reign. That's a premillennialist. The postmillennialist mm-hmm. is very optimistic about the future of human history, believing that okay. the Great Commission is going to be successfully fulfilled. The nations of men will be discipled, will become Christian. Uh, there's going to uh, this is going to usher in a golden age of Christian civilization, and all the nations will stream to Christ. At the end of which, Christ is going to return, conquer the last enemy, death, and the and the the you have a general resurrection of the dead. That's the post millennial view. Right. Okay. And when that does happen, and the resurrection of the dead, is it a life on? On earth yes. as heaven on earth. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, okay. um, and it's not it's not earth instead of heaven. Uh, uh, the way I think of it is, I believe in the fall, uh, where we rebelled against God. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. The heaven and earth go together. They're yep. they're paired, and the one of the results of the fall was that there was a divorce between heaven and earth, and we were sort of quarantined. Mm here on earth. And in the Bible, there are two main images of heaven. One is God dwells in the highest heaven, and you get the image of light years away, you know, um, God dwelling in the highest height. That's one image of heaven. But the other image of heaven is the kind of thing you see at the Lord's baptism, where the sky above him opens up, and, and you get the sense that heaven is right around the corner, or there's like this invisible room right next to us that we don't have access to. Um, and, right. and you have glimpses of that at, uh, when, when Saul is converted on the Damascus Road, or when Stephen is martyred, or when the Lord is baptized, uh, you've got these, you know, you see that heaven is very, very close. My uh, understanding is that when the Lord comes again, and the dead are raised, heaven and earth will be remarried, and we will be here, but not absent from heaven. Everything's going to be unified again. If you enjoyed that reality-based podcast clip, make sure to subscribe to the Reality-Based YouTube channel. We'll be uploading many clips and the full podcast. And also, if you prefer the audible version, you can check us out on Spotify and Apple Podcasts at Reality-Based.